the world watched in horror. It was September 11, 2001. Terror struck the United States, leaving a scar on the nation's soul. The Twin Towers fell, the Pentagon burned, innocent lives were lost, leaving countless families shattered. Among the victims were fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters. Children were left without parents, their young lives forever altered. The world mourned. Amidst the rubble and the tears, stories of loss and resilience began to emerge. One such story is that of Matthew Bakke. He was just a toddler, too young to understand the magnitude of what had happened, yet old enough to feel the gaping hole left by his father's absence. Matthew Bakke was barely two years old, just beginning to explore the world around him with innocent curiosity, when his world changed forever in a way that no child should ever have to experience. His father, Michael Bakke, was a dedicated bond trader who worked at Cantor Fitzgerald in the World Trade Center, a place bustling with activity and ambition. On that fateful morning, Michael kissed his wife and son goodbye, a routine gesture filled with love, unaware that it would be their last moment together. Matthew was playing with his toys, lost in his own little world, when the news flashed across the television screen, shattering the tranquility of their home. His mother, like so many others, frantically tried to reach her husband, her heart pounding with each unanswered ring, each moment filled with growing dread. Days turned into weeks, and the grim reality settled in. Michael was gone, leaving a void that words could never fill. Matthew's childhood would be forever marked by this absence, a shadow that loomed over his formative years. He would grow up without his father's hugs, his laughter, his guidance, missing out on the simple joys of father-son moments. He would only have fragmented memories of the man who loved him dearly, piecing together a picture of his father from stories and photographs. As he grew older Matthew would often draw pictures and write in a journal, trying to keep his father's memory alive in his own way. His family, though heartbroken, rallied around him, providing the love and support he needed to navigate a world without his dad. And through it all, Matthew held on to hope, believing that his father's spirit watched over him, guiding him from afar. As Matthew grew older, he became increasingly aware of the whispers and hushed tones whenever his father's name was mentioned. It was as if his father's memory was a fragile thing, only to be spoken of in secret, behind closed doors. He saw the sadness in his mother's eyes, the way her smile never quite reached them. Her attempts to shield him from the pain were evident, but the sorrow was always there, lurking just beneath the surface. He couldn't comprehend the enormity of his loss, but he felt it in the pit of his stomach, a dull ache that lingered. It was a constant reminder of the void left by his father's absence, a void that seemed to grow with each passing day. Why wasn't his dad coming home? Where did he go? These questions haunted him, filling his young mind with confusion and a sense of longing that he couldn't quite articulate. He would often stare at the photographs of his father, trying to piece together the puzzle of the man he barely knew. Each image was a fragment of a story he desperately wanted to understand. In those images, his father was always smiling, his eyes twinkling with life. It was hard to reconcile these joyful pictures with the reality of his absence. Matthew yearned to know more about him, to hear stories of his adventures, his dreams, his fears. He would sit quietly, listening intently whenever the adult spoke of his father, hoping to catch a glimpse of the man behind the smiles. He craved a connection that seemed lost forever. The photographs and stories were all he had, but they were never enough to fill the emptiness he felt inside. He longed for a bond that transcended the whispers and shadows, a bond that could bring his father's memory to life. Adolescence arrived with its own set of challenges. The pain of his father's absence intensified, manifesting in anger and confusion. Matthew grappled with questions about life, death, and the unfairness of it all. He felt cheated out of a normal childhood, robbed of the chance to know his father. This simmering resentment sometimes boiled over, leading to outbursts of frustration and tears. School became a battleground. Concentrating on studies seemed impossible when his mind was consumed by a maelstrom of emotions. He felt isolated, different from his peers who had the luxury of two parents. While they complained about trivial matters, Matthew carried the weight of his loss a burden too heavy for his young shoulders. Section 5, The Teenage Wilderness. Matthew sought solace in unhealthy ways. He withdrew from friends and family, retreating into himself. The pain was too raw, too overwhelming to share. 
he turned to video games and the internet, seeking escape from the harsh realities of his life. These distractions provided temporary relief but did little to address the root cause of his anguish. His grades plummeted and his once bright spirit dimmed. He felt lost and alone, adrift in a sea of grief. His mother, though heartbroken herself, recognized that her son was spiraling downward. She knew she had to do something, but what? How do you mend a broken heart, especially one so young? Section 6. A Helping Hand A glimmer of hope emerged when Matthew's mother discovered a support group for children who had lost parents in the 9-11 attacks. She had been searching for ways to help her son cope with the overwhelming grief that had consumed their lives. It was called Tuesday's Children, a safe haven where young hearts could heal together. This group provided a sanctuary, a place where children could express their emotions freely and find solace in shared experiences. At first, Matthew was hesitant. The idea of opening up to strangers about his deepest pain was daunting. He didn't want to talk about his feelings, didn't want to relive the pain. The memories were too raw, too fresh. The sadness was a constant companion and he feared that talking about it would only make it worse. But his mother persisted, gently encouraging him to give it a try. She knew that healing required facing the pain, not avoiding it. Stepping into that room for the first time, Matthew felt a wave of relief wash over him. He wasn't alone. The room was filled with other children who had walked a similar path of loss and heartache. Here were other kids just like him who understood his pain, his anger, his confusion. They spoke the same unspoken language of grief, his anger, his confusion. They shared stories, tears, and even moments of laughter, finding comfort in each other's presence. They had all experienced the same profound loss, the same gaping hole in their lives. The bond they formed was immediate and strong the same gaping hole in their lives. They held hands, offered hugs, and provided a shoulder to cry on. For the first time, Matthew felt seen, heard, and understood. The weight on his shoulders began to lift, heard, and understood. He started to open up, sharing his thoughts and feelings, and in doing so, he began to heal. Section 7. Finding His Voice. Tuesday's children became Matthew's lifeline. It was a place where he could finally express his grief openly and honestly, without judgment or pity. He formed deep bonds with other members, sharing stories, tears, and laughter. Through group therapy sessions, he began to understand that his feelings were valid, that he wasn't weird or broken for grieving the loss of his father. As Matthew healed, he discovered a newfound purpose, to help others who were struggling with loss and trauma. He realized that his story, though born out of tragedy, had the power to inspire hope. He began to share his journey at public events, his voice trembling at first, but gaining strength with each word. Inspired by the transformative power of Tuesday's children, Matthew decided to launch his own initiative. With the support of his family and friends, he established the Matthew Bakke Foundation. This organization aims to provide mental health resources and support to young people who have experienced loss, trauma, or are facing mental health challenges. The foundation quickly gained momentum, attracting volunteers and donors who were moved by Matthew's story and his dedication to helping others. They organized workshops, awareness campaigns, and fundraising events, spreading their message of hope and resilience far and wide. What started as a personal journey of healing transformed into a beacon of hope for countless young people. Matthew's story became a testament to the power of human resilience, the ability to find light in the darkest of times. He proved that even in the face of unimaginable loss, it's possible to rise above the pain and make a difference in the world. His message resonated with audiences everywhere. He spoke at schools, community centers, and conferences, sharing his story with raw honesty and vulnerability. He encouraged others to embrace their pain, to seek help when they needed it, and to remember that they were not alone. Matthew's willingness to be vulnerable, to share his deepest fears and insecurities, was his greatest strength. He understood that true strength lay not in hiding our wounds, but in allowing them to heal in the light of compassion and understanding. His authenticity inspired others to do the same, to let go of shame and embrace their own journeys of healing. He became a voice for the voiceless, a champion for mental health awareness. He challenged the stigma surrounding mental illness, encouraging open dialogue and compassion, he reminded everyone that it's okay to not be okay, that asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. 
Matthew Bokey's story is a powerful reminder that even in the face of profound tragedy, hope can emerge from the ashes. His journey from grief-stricken toddler to mental health advocate is an inspiration to us all. He teaches us about the importance of community, the healing power of vulnerability, and the transformative nature of turning pain into purpose. As we remember the events of 9-11, let us also remember the stories of resilience and hope that emerged from the rubble. Let us honor the memory of those we lost by embracing the preciousness of life and dedicating ourselves to creating a world where love, compassion, and understanding prevail. Let us never forget 9-11.